I'm Anne Marie Mahoney. Welcome to News Now and Health Updates. Uh, welcome to a new year. I am very happy to have member of the Board of Health, Dr. Adrienne Allen, with me today. She's going to share with us some updates on all of those respiratory illnesses we've been hearing about and we had thought we'd gotten rid of, but wait, they're back. Um, let's see what's going on. And then a reminder about the latest vaccine clinic. Dr. Allen, talk to us a little bit about what's going on out there and how we can protect ourselves. Okay, well, happy new year. Um, as expected in the winter, uh, all of the respiratory illnesses are increased and spreading pretty rapidly in the community. We just got word that Middlesex County is in the high for COVID. Again, so meaning that it is recommended for people to wear masks, particularly if you're high risk. Um, and if you haven't received your bivalent booster yet, and it's been you know, more than two months since your last booster, consider getting it. We do have an upcoming booster clinic, January 12th. I think you're going to share that at Bethel. The Board of Health website and their Facebook page has a link to, um, to sign up. The other thing that's back for the first time in years is flu. Um, we are in the high category in Middlesex County for the past few weeks, higher actually than even prior to COVID, mainly influenza A. Um, and our vaccination rate for the state is around 42%. So keeping in mind, you know, vaccinations are available for flu also. We talk a lot about COVID. You can get your COVID and flu shots at the same time safely. Um, and even if you still get the flu after getting your vaccination, it's generally less severe. Um, and the other virus that's been going around is RSV. Fortunately, RSV has peaked a bit. It's still high, but it's coming down from that big peak we saw. Hopefully it'll continue to come down. So that's the third virus. Um, but the one thing I also wanna say is if you do get sick with an upper respiratory infection, um, there are treatments available, right? We know for, so, so we definitely recommend testing with a home antigen test. There should be some more free tests coming available to the, the department of um, our health department soon. But test, you test, if the first test is negative, you test again within 24 to 36 hours to confirm that. If it's negative, you might have the flu. Um, and if you're high risk for the flu and who's high risk, um, children under five are actually high risk, um, people over 65 and with certain health conditions like diabetes, chronic kidney disease, immunosuppression, if you're at high risk, you qualify if you have the flu for Tamiflu. So you should call your healthcare provider and consider that. And if you live with a household contact who has a flu, so say you're high risk, over 65, under age five, and your household contact has the flu, you can take Tamiflu as a preventative, but you have to be in the same house. So just wanna let the, there are tools out there. Masking is a tool, there's treatment out there. And then for flu exposure and you're living with someone with the flu, you can take a preventative. And all of these things go a long way to preventing severe illness and seeking you know, hospitalization or emergency. So all right, that's good advice. I didn't know that about yeah. the Tamiflu um, in case a household member, that's really good to know. And I think that will be helpful information for a lot of people. Um, what about masking? Do you think we're going to come back to some mask mandates, maybe in the schools or the community, or should we just be safe on our own, figure it out? You know, it's we're not the board doesn't meet again for a little bit. I think you should make your judgment on your own personal health risks. COVID has certainly changed, and I'm not at liberty to speak for the board, just for my own personal knowledge. It is high risk, um, but we haven't seen the same level of um, severe illness as we used to. Certainly, if you have underlying conditions, we do see complications from it, but it's a different different disease. Um, and so all of these things have to be discussed, but it's not a simple yes, no, like it used to be. It's an, it's, it's an evolving disease. And fortunately, even when people get COVID, if they're vaccinated, if they get Paxlovid, um, which is the treatment, people do quite well. And I should say, if you have a reason not to take Paxlovid, there, are, there is another treatment available. 
that's uh, IV. So you should talk to your doctor about that. And all of these things help prevent severe. We have more, we have more um, things to work with than we used to. All right, excellent. Good to know that there's, there's more things out there to help us out. Uh, Dr. Allen, you mentioned COVID and you mentioned Paxlovid as a, a treatment as soon as you realize that you have the disease. How does somebody access that, that drug and that treatment? That's great. You know, with so many people being sick, sometimes it is hard to get through to a provider or urgent care. Obviously, your physician or urgent care is a first line option, but the state, Massachusetts.gov, uh, has a free telehealth Paxlovid prescribing program. Um, that website is on the um, board of the Department of Health Facebook page, and it's you can Google Mass. Paxlovid prescribing. It's free telehealth available to everyone and they will set you up and get you a prescription. All right. That's good to know because someone could get sick, you know, a Friday night. These things always seem to happen on the weekend and it might that's be right. hard to get their own provider. So that's great information. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, let's shift to new year, as we noted at the beginning. Um, this is the time everyone makes resolutions. And this is the time you see all those ads on television about, you know, losing weight and all the diet programs or whatever. Let's talk a little bit about some healthy resolutions. What should we be looking to do as we start a new year to keep ourselves healthy? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. Um, there is no one way, but it seems to me that the easy way to start a resolution is something that is easy to do and doesn't take a major life shift. So we think about it in a few domains. One is what you eat, two is your exercise, three is your sleep, four is your mental health. So um, it can be small gains. So for exercise, of course, the recommendation is to move 30 minutes most days, but studies show even three minutes of vigorous exercise can have a profound effect. So there is a three minute workout app or a seven minute workout app. To do that, even a couple days a week can help. And even to do regular housework or walking and mentally think about it as exercise has been shown to really help. So, so it's small things. Of course, we have a big goal, but try to do small things. For food, trying to reduce sugar. Um, and then I'll quote Michael Pollan, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. You know, small changes. <laughs> small changes go a long way. Um, and sleep's a big thing too. If you're having trouble sleeping, talk to your provider. Exercise can help, but it takes about a month to get in there. And then we talk about the mental health, taking time to take care of your, to take care of your brain. And that's a big motivating factor. Positivity or positive motivation can help with that inner critic. I think we all have an inner critic that tells us you're not doing enough or you're not enough, but being, paying attention to that and finding a positive motivator or a friend to help with these changes. Often these changes stick better if you have a friend or a partner to do it with. All right, good idea about the friend. I hadn't thought about that, absolutely. And yes, mental health. You know, we find ourselves in the dead of winter. Uh, it's dark, it's dreary, and sometimes we can really become isolated. So having that friend sounds like a great idea. Um, if you can't physically get together with the friend, how about Zooming, yeah. phone call, a couple of texts, just to, to keep that connection going? I think those are great. Trying to foster connection helps because if you're feeling alone, others often feel alone too. So, so write that text, write that connection. It makes a big difference. Okay. Excellent. Um, what else? Oh, how about outdoor activities? We mentioned dead of winter, but yeah. that gives us some great opportunities for outdoor activities. What's yeah. your favorite outdoor sport? Oh, I like to ski. Um, that's of course my outdoor, but we have no snow here. So the weather's yeah. been warm. So I'm trying to take advantage <laughs> of, you know, going for a walk, uh, going for a run, just getting out in nature. Habitat is such a great place. Lone Tree Hill, you know, those are all things that can help with mental health in the winter, just being in nature. So getting light, even though it's hazy today, even getting light, especially early morning light, um, on these winter months really can help with that seasonal affective disorder. So trying to absorb that, going out for a walk while it's light out can help. And then it's also okay to rest. I think we're in a go, go, go society. And we do, some of that seasonal affective is that natural urge to rest. And it's okay to, you know, turn the lights down at night, embrace the darkness and sleep a little bit and reset your body so that you're ready to go again in the spring. And that's okay too. All right. Yes. And wintertime, that's when I do my binge watching. That's there you go. I catch up with all my Brit box stuff. So 
that's a good thing too. If it makes you happy, you know, try it and do it. There you go. Okay. All right. Um, I think we've reached the end of our time. We've covered a lot of topics. Thank you so much. And reminder about the next vaccine clinic. It is Thursday, January 12th from 10 to 12. It's going to be held at Bethel Temple, where we've seen a lot of them being held, uh, offering flu vaccine, both the uh, Pfizer and Moderna boosters for COVID. You do have to sign up and make an appointment. So get on the Board of Health website, on the town website, uh, and make that appointment and do it. All right. Thank you so much. Looking forward to chatting with you again in the next few weeks. Meanwhile, stay healthy, everybody. This is Anne-Marie Mahoney for Health Update.